14, uh, August, 16th of August, 1819, there was a huge rally just around the corner in front of what's called GMEX. I don't know if people spotted it, the great big railway station with the clock on it. Um, and this was essentially about two things. It was a, a crowd of about 60,000 people gathered um, at a meeting that they previously been told was now illegal uh, and was banned. Most people were coming along, so a key speaker was a guy called Henry Hunt, who was a, a major sort of pro-democracy reformer. But a lot of the crowd were there as well uh, about the Corn Laws, which were making bread unaffordable for people. So basically they'd been told not to gather, um, and 60,000 of them did. Um, before Hunt and, and his colleagues actually managed to get up and, and start speaking, um, the, what's called the yeomanry, the local yeomanry, who were essentially the equivalent of the El Salvador death squads. Um, they were told by the, um, by the magistrates that they had to break up the meeting. There was a really, really strong fear that this was going to turn into a riot, as had some previous things that Henry Hunt did speak at. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't completely innocent in that sense, but people had said that their intentions were peaceful. There was a really, really strong emphasis on, on if you like, non-violence, uh, or a slightly anachronistic phrase for the time, but there was a really strong thing about people are not going to kick off. It's not going to be a riot. We're going to show that we're, we're if you like, respectable, calm people. People turned up in their Sunday best. There was lots and lots of emphasis on, on women being there, one of the other interesting things about Peter Luke. The, the sort of emphasis on that, that, that women were not going to offer violence to anybody. But interestingly enough, it's actually the women who got injured far more than men, proportionately, when, when the yeomanry finally charged, because they decided they were going to go and arrest the speakers. Now, to get through a crowd that thick, you can imagine what it was like, 60,000 people gathered in that space. They charged through the crowd. And they immediately, uh, the crowd reacted by linking arms and resisting them, not, not with violence, uh, although there was a lot of violence later that evening. So people passively resisted them and tried to prevent them from getting to the, um, the speaker's car, the speakers. And that was basically when they, they drew their sabers and started uh, cutting at people. There was a particular emphasis on attacking what's known as the liberty caps. And if you can just see up top here, something that, yes, does look like a magic mushroom. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's any coincidence. This is one of the sort of um, really strong symbols of the day, and it's one that we're going to try and revive, because as you all know, we're having a, a rally tomorrow. We've actually created some modern beanie versions of Liberty Caps. Yeah. And we're actually going to raise these for effectively the first time in 200 years, and hopefully there won't be any savers involved. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the main targets. They wanted to get rid of all the, um, all the symbols. Uh, this was seen as a symbol of the, of the French Revolution, um, although it actually dates back to ancient Greece, the uh, Liberty Cap. Close up. They're not in any particular order, these slides. I'll keep jumping uh, around. Um, yeah, so here we have a, a Typical liberty cap from an engraving by Hogarth, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but also, all the banners were, 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 were targeted. They basically wanted to get rid of the message. Um, anybody, uh, anybody who was a reporter there was uh, arrested at the end, so it was uh, an attempt to control. I mean, it's all very familiar stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was an attempt to control um, uh, like the news about it. Um, the magistrates were what had actually read the riot act, you know, the, 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 the riot act saying that we you know, the king commands you to disperse, um, but they read it from the top window. Um, right at the outskirts of the crowd, so it wasn't really that much of a warning. But when the yeomanry, as I say, who were, who were basically, they were mill owners, they were, they were a private section of the army, they were mill owners, shopkeepers, which in those days wasn't like uh, you know, Ronnie Barker, who was, um, who was a, you were actually quite a powerful person within your society if you, if you were a shop owner. Um, so basically they're a, a militia, and what's really, really disturbing is that they knew a lot of the people that they attacked. Some of the people who are actually cut or cut by their bosses, which is why I think the analogy of uh, the El Salvadorian death squad is, is, is pretty accurate. The private, uh, sorry, the, 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 the official army were there, the Hassans, they were on the outskirts down by, you know, where the pedal is, and by yeah. before the hall. Mm -hmm. They had two cannons down there, and they were still in waiting. But it's worth bearing in mind that this was, this was a very short time after Waterloo, and whatever you might personally feel you have about war, it's a little bit like um, during, um, uh, during something like the Falklands or the Gulf War. A lot of people had family in the army, so the army weren't necessarily seen as a threat. They weren't necessarily seen as a, an enemy. And in fact, were given cheers. Uh, Henry Hunt, shortly before he was arrested, called for a cheer for the, um, for the, for the army. And I think that was uh, partly a sort of a goad towards, um, towards the private army, the, the yeomanry. But when the yeomanry went into the crowd, the, um, the regular army were waiting at the back. The magistrates, again, watching from a distance, interpreted all this. You can imagine it was just hullabaloo with all these, um, these swords being swung. 
people getting knocked over. The first, the first person to be killed was a child knocked over by a, a charging horse. But they interpreted that as the crowd attacking the only. Yeah. And then they sent in the regular army as well, led by Captain uh, Hugh Burley, which uh, is quite interesting. This is where I come from, it's Burley Fields. So this is where I live in you know, And these names start popping up once you start looking into it. Um, and that was, you know, that was a, I mean, that was a kind of different thing with the, with the private army. You know, they, they, they did kind of kill a lot of people, but there were also some of them who tried to prevent the yeomanry inflicting any further injuries. So you've got one of those strange things where it's not, it's not black and white, and it's kind of a mix of what sort of went on. But after about 10 minutes, um, they, they, cleared the, um, they cleared the crowd, but they also prevented them retreating. People retreated to, to here. I think people tried to hide in the, um, in the yard here, and somebody was actually attacked in the grounds of this building. If you, if you look outside of the corridor, there's actually a little, um, mm. what do you call those stitch things? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah tapestry, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're actually commemorating that. But also people were trying to sort of lead through some of the surrounding streets, and, uh, and they were basically hemmed in by the hussars with, um, with um, what do you call them, uh, the, the, the bayonets on the end of them, you know, being poked, so they couldn't flee in that direction, you know, the yeomanry attacking them from uh, another direction. So the idea that it all happened on the field isn't necessarily the case. There was, there was murders happening uh, all the way through the evening. There were attacks in some of the um, uh, areas outside Manchester where people had come from, most notably an area called the New Cross, uh, which is up near Ancoats, mm -hmm. which was seen as a hotbed of rebellion. Uh, a young, uh, not a young, so a special constable who were the first people to try and uh, come to arrest the speaker. So it was the constables first, followed by the owner, followed by the army. And one of them was beaten to death by a, a mob up in New Cross in the evening. So some of the casualties that you hear about of the um, it's, it ranges between 11 is the old estimate and 18, which is one of the highest estimates. We, we usually say about 15, but some of those, two of those were actually the, um, the, the constables, so it wasn't just victims on, on, on part of the um, demonstrators. And there were 600 injuries. Uh, and many of those would have been extremely serious cuts from, from sabres. Some of the, 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 the soldiers did actually use the back of the, um, of the blade, and a lot of them also used the front. And if you got cut like that, uh, you know, A, it's very difficult to go to hospital you know, because you don't want to be identified as one of the people who are there. B, you know, like, there is just no benefits. There's, there's nothing to turn to in terms of money. I mean, everybody sort of broke a limb 